What do you think mm -hmm. is the best thing about keeping Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, not only did we didn't we not believe that he was going to be here. Kyle Shanahan used the term. I was on the conference call yesterday. Slim to none. Literally, right. that's what he thought. And and that was always my hesitance to it. I was always open to Jimmy Garoppolo being here on a restructured whatever deal, even if it's the highest for a backup. I believe he's the best backup. So but I just thought that Jimmy Garoppolo would have never said yes to this. Like, why would you do this team a favor? Don't you want to continue your career? But when all options get exhausted, this is what you get. And this yeah. is the best case scenario probably for both. So, yeah, what's good about it is I think this is two things. And I'm going to use a three a three letter initial and then a four letter initial. One is PTSD. And that's Kyle Shanahan from watching CJ Beathard and Nick Mullins have to take meaningful snaps and knowing yes. that Nate Sudfeld and Brock Purdy, that was going to be where you were going to be if something happened to Trey Lance. So that's one. The second is CYA, and it's cover your ass. And this is exactly what this is. Just in case something happens to Trey Lance, it's both of these things combined. Now you have the best backup in football, a guy who can easily slide right in and just go ahead and operate this offense efficiently. And again, not many teams have that. The reason that I say he's the best backup is because I believe that he is a starter in this league. So if I believe he's a starter, how could he not be the best backup? And and, I, and I'll, I'll take that to the bank. I like the CYA thing. It's like if Kyle had won that Super Bowl in Atlanta, you know, if Kyle had, you know, if he was 10 games over 500, I don't know that Jimmy would be here, but he's not. And he didn't. And so <clears throat> if he just runs Jimmy off and Trey struggles, the team misses the playoffs. I mean, Trey will take a lot of heat, but Kyle will take a mm -hmm. ton of freaking heat and he knows it. And now this, this sort of puts him off the, the stove for now. Right. He's off the, the burner for now. So, yeah, I mean, it, to me, this feels like this insulates the Niners from having a disaster season where Trey gets hurt and Nate Sudfeld starts all the games. Like, at least that probably – well, Nate Sudfeld's not on the team, so that's definitely not going to happen. Yeah, that's a uh, Lions legend, Nate Sudfeld, now. Can you what? freaking believe that? <laughs> Why? I mean, look, <clears throat> Nate Sudfeld's a perfect QB, too. Like, like he's just like – and that's what it is. And most of the time, QB backups three. aren't – aren't. yeah, well, now, I mean – well, I know they he's QB2 over there. Yeah, God, but yeah, but Purdy Purdy did play a little bit better than him, and, and and I won't lie about that. But again, the reason that they make the move from Sudfeld is the two million dollars is offset right now with whatever the Lions are are going to give him. So if the, the Lions give him one point four, they just owe him six hundred thousand. I get so also, excited when the York save money. Yes, right, yes. and then. Then think about this. If Brock Purdy is sent to the practice squad, then you have to negotiate a whole different contract. You keep him on the 53, and now you have that cost-controlled rookie, even if he's Mr. Irrelevant. So I think that was smart all the way through and through. Who knew? Look at all these smart moves. Look at all these quick, subtle maneuvers that are going on here that are actually we're, – we're even both yeah. in agreement. It's like, man, this works. Yeah, see, that's why I had a feeling they were going to keep Jimmy. Um, it just would look stupid to say, we're not going to cut him, we're not going to cut him. Actually, we, we are cutting him right, right. now. It's true. Uh, and it's like – the way they restructured they restructured it. They, he took a pay cut. Keeping him as, as a $27 million backup was not an option. And I I don't think Jimmy's happy about this. I think privately he thought he'd get cut. And yeah. the Niners were like, no, no. You, you thought you were in control of your destiny. You're not. You're going to be with us this year. And I think they kind of felt like you – know, a lot of people said they're going to do right by Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they felt that he didn't do right by them with that surgery. So, hey, man, like you put us in a tough spot. Now we got to put you in a tough spot and we're all going to have, we're all going to uh, play it off with a smile on our faces for the cameras. Right. Right. And what I learned is maybe we should start listening to Kyle Shanahan when he speaks, because like you said, you know, like he's been saying the entire time, we're not just going to give him away anything like that. And yeah. they were steadfast on getting something for him and also telling him, we're not going to get rid of you for no reason and let you walk. So maybe we should start listening to him about, you know, uh, Jimmy's the starter. Trey's not going to be able to play this year. I don't think that he's ready. We're going to go. He was saying that the entire time. Boom. Then that's what happens. Now the same thing is happening with, with this. And maybe we should just start listening to Kyle. As much as we want to decipher what he's saying or, or listen to yeah. his riddles and everything, yeah. kind of just says what he means at this point. I, that's the way I look at it. I mean, he said it multiple times. John Lynch said it and Jed said it. We're not cutting him. So I was like, that's I, I don't see them all lying. And then uh, coming back out after they cut him in a press conference being like, we tricked you. Yeah. We tricked you. You trusted right. us. Like they, they're not going to do that. And they didn't. And they I did. think the league expected that too. So when yeah. the league is expecting you to zig, the Niners are going to zag. And I think oh, that yeah. that's what everybody was kind of waiting for was just like, well, they got to cut him, right? They got to cut him for this money. But when you work that deal out, $6 million, you're saving all that money in cap space and everything. His dead cap hit, which just came out, is going to be $13 million this year. That is far and away less than what it was going to be. So you still save money and you still opened up the possibility of a trade for another player during the trade deadline, before the trade deadline, that can help your team.
don't you think Kyle takes pleasure also in the fact that he's telling you exactly what he's doing and people still are like, well, what does Kyle mean by that? He's like, right. I just told you again right. how I feel. And everyone's like, let's interpret Kyle's words. I don't understand how to be more direct. I, I right. like that about Kyle. I'm yeah, trying to tell you. Right. Yeah. Like you, you guys are the ones that are running with the narrative. He always says things like that. And it's absolutely true. And then also like the Mac Jones stuff. It's not my job to stomp out those narratives. I'll let you say whatever it is that you want, you know, and then he's he's gone on to admit that. Like he was, was supposed team. to be like a month before the draft. No, we're not taking Mac. We're taking Trey Lance. Everyone needs right. to know. Like, there's a little mystery here that goes on with the draft, you know? That's how 100%. it works. So, look, I think it's good that the Niners kept Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, at least it was the best decision at this point. 